Okay. Okay, so uh, we're very glad to have the final speaker of the day, Professor Janusz Park from uh, Rennie Institute and IST and MIPT. And he will tell us about geometric graph theory. Over to you. So uh, thank you very much for the invitation, for the introduction. Uh, it is uh, really uh, always a, a pleasure to be in Calcutta and for, ma for many years, essentially every year I, or, or very often I visited uh, IST, which is uh, one of my uh, favorite institutions. Also, I think it's, it's a very, very rare kind of uh, thing that an institute uh, plays such a central role uh, in the, not only in the scientific life, but also in the history of a country. So it's uh, uh, really the Indian Statistical Institute is uh, something uh, very special. And um, I, I have many uh, good friends and uh, colleagues uh, at, at the Institute and, and uh, I very much hope that I uh, can go again indeed uh, in the flesh. And of course, uh, during my visits, I also uh, met uh, several times Professor Bimal Roy. Now, uh, so the title of my talk is uh, What is Geometric Graph Theory? So I will try to uh, tell you a number of uh, uh, important problems, a number of uh, questions, and just outline uh, kind of this, this territory. I don't think that it is uh, very difficult to, to understand the uh, basic questions and to develop a kind of a taste for them. Uh, but some of the questions may require uh, uh, some uh, interesting mathematical techniques uh, or computational techniques too. So this, uh, this, this is uh, the, this picture uh, you see uh, Paul Erdős, a famous uh, Hungarian uh, combinatorist. And in fact, he uh, played an important role as you will see uh, in many of the problems that were uh, Sort of are considered today as basic questions in geometric graph theory. Now, this uh, title geometric graph theory, uh, people use it in, in several senses, but, but actually for this talk, uh, geometric graphs it will have a technical meaning. So, you look at the graph, like in this uh, picture here, um, which is drawn in the plane. So the vertices are points in the plane and the edges are straight line segments connecting certain pairs of vertices. So what you see here is, uh, is a geometric graph. And uh, it's important that I don't require uh, that the graph is planar. So, uh, there can be crossings, like here you see that these two edges cross each other, or, or here you even three, see three pairwise crossing edges. So crossings are perfectly possible. But this particular drawing with this particular position of the points and the segments connecting them, this is considered the geometric graph. And surprisingly uh, for this, or not so surprisingly for this object, many uh, interesting and difficult questions can be asked. And uh, <coughs> already at the definition, you may wonder that why we restrict our attention uh, to graphs that are drawn by straight line segments. But in fact, we don't. And uh, those graphs that uh, similar, uh, similar definition, but we allow any uh, continuous arcs um, as edges. Uh, we call them topological graph. Uh, and again, this is, a, this is a technical term. 
And uh, for many of the questions, many of the conjectures, whatever, uh, they make perfect sense for topological graphs. Uh, and we consider them only for geometric graphs because uh, even for straight line drawings, uh, there are difficulties that we uh, cannot overcome. Okay, so of course the crossings, this is, this is a basic, uh, basic theme in the subject. And, um, and uh, there, there is a very useful uh, famous lemma, which is very often just referred to as the crossing lemma, which says something about uh, the crossings in such a way. And uh, roughly speaking, this, uh, this lemma uh, says that if you have a, gra a geometric graph, you draw it by, by uh, straight line segments, or here it is not important that whether they are straight line segments or not, whether it's geometric graph or topological, uh, if you know that it contains many uh, edges, then just from this fact, we can conclude that the number of crossings on the picture must be large. And this is a, 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 a sort of quantitative version of that, which was discovered uh, roughly 40 years ago by uh, Leighton and uh, group of four uh, other mathematicians. So obviously for such a theorem to hold, you have to assume that the number of edges uh, is bigger than three and minus six, because as long as the number of edges is three and minus six, uh, it, maybe there, there are no crossings, maybe the graph is planar. So we cannot guarantee that that if there are n vertices and c n minus six crossing, we cannot even guarantee that there will be one crossing. But if we go beyond the c n minus six, for instance, we assume that the number of edges is at least four times the number of vertices, then there must be crossings, and there must be a lot of crossings. Uh, and this is this is the formula, the constant. We don't know the best constant. Forget about the constant, but the order of magnitude is e cubed divided by n squared. So for instance, if you look at the graph and the graph contains, uh, so in principle, if you have a graph uh, of n vertices, it can have n choose two, this means a quadratic number of edges. And assume that the number of uh, edges is, is uh, quadratic, say at least a positive percentage of all, all possible edges, in that case, if E is quadratic, then E cube is of the order of magnitude of n to the six divided by n squared is n to the four. Then this uh, crossing lemma says that the number of crossings must be at least some constant times n to the four. And uh, <clears throat> this is of course um, the best or the worst, you can say that it can get because uh, if you have n square edges, even if every edge crosses every other edge, then the total number of, if you have n square edges, the total number of crossings is <coughs> n to the, the order of magnitude of n to the fourth. And what this lemma says is that, that if your graph is dense, then indeed uh, the, 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 there should be a positive percentage of the possible crossings should be there. And it is very easy to come up uh, with a construction uh, that shows that this E cube divided by N square, this is the right order of magnitude. Essentially, uh, you have to grow a graph in which there are E, uh, e uh, edges and then vertices uh, so that this graph consists of uh, disjoint parts and each part is uh, each part um, is a complete uh, a complete graph so if the sizes of those parts are 2 e over n then you can check that uh, uh, everything works out and and uh, it has exactly e cube divided i mean some constant times e cube divided by n square crossing it is uh, of course um, under persistent attack to try to find here the best constant and then maybe now we are 
is in a factor of no of two knowing that but uh, that's uh, uh, so important so this crossing lemma uh, is actually an extremely useful and um, and uh, interesting statement and i only mention here um, two applications uh, of it i don't go into uh, details is that um, the both of them somehow uh, give um, answers to questions asked by Erdős, which uh, play important role in uh, especially the first one in combinatorial and, and uh, computational geometry so the first one is that um, uh, the following statement you do you put endpoints in the plane and uh, you connect two of them by an edge if their distance is one and uh, the question is that how many edges will you have how many pairs uh, of points can you have am among m points in the plane uh, whose distance is precisely one and um, we don't know the answer but using the crossing lemma one can prove n to the fourth third uh, and this is the best known thing previously um, there was a very complicated proof given by spencer samarady and trotter 40 years ago but if you just use the crossing lemma then there is a very short proof and the second theorem that's also an important uh, statement which has many applications in uh, geometric algorithms uh, again interestingly the answer is n to the fourth third again there's an elegant uh, uh, argument uh, giving that using the crossing lemma uh, so the question is that if you have n points in the plane then in how many combinatorially different ways can you cut it into two parts by a line so when i to, to combinatorially different ways i mean if if i draw two lines and both of those lines have the same points on the left side same points on the right side that's not combinatorially different and again the answer is n to the fourth third and it's i mentioned that because in both of these applications actually we expect that the truth is much closer to n than to the end to n to the fourth third in both cases it is conjectured that instead of n to the fourth third one can uh, uh, get a bound which is n to the one plus epsilon okay now um, so this is uh, the so if you, if you have a graph and and uh, and uh, uh, we want to draw it with as few crossings as possible then the smallest number of uh, possible crossings that's called the crossing number of a graph now here i already mentioned one of the most interesting problems uh, in the area which is which is there hanging there or lurking there from the very beginning so this crossing number you can define in uh, several different ways uh, so one way of defining it is just uh, the, the one that i essentially mentioned before that you take your graph g and you want to draw it in the plane so that the number of crossing points between the edges is as small as possible there is another possible definition uh, and uh, it took a long time to realize that that this is this is really another definition uh, this is called today the pair crossing number. the pair crossing number is that uh, instead of counting the actual physical crossings between the edges what we are counting is that how many pairs of edges cross so if a pair of edges uh, like on this picture you see cross uh, several times even then we just count it once uh, because one bank crossing pair of edges 
So in principle, this definition, the uh, crossing, uh, the pair crossing number is obviously smaller than or equal to the crossing number because, uh, because multiple crossings can be uh, counted only once in the pair crossing number. So, so what is the interesting problem here? The interesting problem here is that we don't have a single graph in which, uh, for which these two definitions wouldn't coincide. So this is, a, uh, this is a, an old open problem. Is it true that these two crossing numbers are the same for every graph? Uh, you would think, especially if you are, you know, a computer scientist that, that uh, this, this is a, cannot be a difficult question because uh, you look at the number of small graphs and you determine uh, uh, the crossing number, you determine the pair crossing number, and you check whether these uh, two are equal. But unfortunately, uh, this is difficult because the determination of, uh, of the crossing number, both the crossing number and the pair crossing number are um, computationally intractable, difficult problems. MP, they are all uh, uh, MP hard. So even for graphs with, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 vertices, it is hopeless to determine these, uh, these numbers. Therefore, any kind of result uh, concerning uh, between the relationship of the crossing number and the pair crossing number is interesting. So as I said, the pair crossing number is the smaller one. And definitely the crossing number of a graph can be bounded from above by a function of the pair crossing number. So if, if you know that the, the uh, pair crossing number is uh, fixed, then the crossing number cannot be much, much, much larger than the pair crossing number. It can be at most the pair crossing number choose two. Actually, uh, the best known result today is that the crossing number is bounded from above by the three halves uh, power, roughly the three halves power of the pair crossing number. Okay. But uh, let's get uh, back to the beginnings. Let's back uh, uh, to Erdős. So, in fact, uh, not only to Erdős, but, but all these mathematicians, famous mathematicians, Hopf, Panvitz, Fenke, Sutherland, Neumann, Redei, Santalo, in the 1930s were uh, in a problem section of the German uh, journal, Jahresberichter der Deutschen Mathematiker Vereinigung, uh, there was a question asked and all these people gave answers. Um, so that was like 90 years ago. And with the language that I just introduced, I can say, uh, I can state the theorem, which uh, they proved as follows, that um, if you have a geometric graph, again, a graph which is drawn by straight line edges, and we assume that there are no two disjoint edges, then the number of edges cannot be bigger than the number of uh, vertices. So that's, uh, that's a very nice statement. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, almost surely if you start thinking about it, then uh, uh, within finite time, you would come up with a, nice solutions, there are several nice solutions. So here is at the time, 1930, this is uh, Paul Erdős's um, uh, pass, bus pass for the Budapest uh, buses. And uh, he immediately after that asked the, asked the following question that, okay, so if he, if he allow two disjoint edges, but, but there are no three pairwise disjoint edges, uh, then what is the situation? And uh, 
in a joint paper with uh, Noga Alon, which is also, which was also written more than 30 years ago, uh, he gave a linear answer, 6M, to this. Today we have uh, uh, the best constant. And, um, but, but the question for larger values of K, if we only assume that there are no, like, 10 pairwise disjoint edges uh, in a geometric graph, then uh, it remained open that uh, what the best bond is. And in fact, the first linear bond was uh, given a few years later. <clears throat> so uh, the interesting open problem here uh, is whether uh, the constant, uh, so, so there is a linear bond, okay, that we know. So if, if you have a geometric graph and there are no key pairwise disjoint edges, then, then uh, uh, the maximum number of edges is, uh, is uh, constant times n. But how does the constant depend on k? Probably it depends linearly on k. That's, that's uh, an interesting open question. I don't think that uh, uh, this should be uh, hopelessly difficult. So, okay, as I said, the, the, uh, sometimes we look at the questions uh, for geometric graphs, but we really are interested in topological graphs. We are interested in graphs that are drawn uh, with curvilinear edges. So is there a difference? Uh, that's a uh, that's an interesting issue. So definitely, uh, if you want to have uh, similar results than for geometric graphs, it's better to assume that okay, the edges can be curvilinear, but we still assume, just like for segments, that any two edges cross at most once. And those topological graphs uh, we call uh, simple topological graphs. So here, for instance, you see uh, a graph in which any two edges uh, cross at most once. And uh, if you look at it more carefully, then it is actually a cycle of length six. And uh, moreover, it has the property that there are no two disjoint edges. So this means that any two edges either share an endpoint, like here, this, these two edges, or cross uh, once. Such a graph is called a threckle. This was, uh, <clears throat> this, this name was introduced by, by Conte. So you can ask the same question. What is the maximum number of edges that uh, such a simple topological graph can have? So any two edges cross at most ones, if it has no two disjoint edges. So this means that two edges either share an endpoint, or if they don't share an endpoint, then they properly cross. So this is a threshold here, right? Because uh, if you look at this edge and this edge, for instance, they share an endpoint. If you look at this edge, this edge, the cross. This is also a, this is also a threshold, and this is also a threshold. In all of these examples, actually, the number of edges is exactly the same as the number of vertices. So this made uh, John Conway. Uh, make the following uh, conjecture that, uh, which is known today as convex circle conjecture, that let uh, G be a circle, the number of vertices is N, the number of edges is E, then the number of edges is always at most the number of vertices. So the previous theorem that I said uh, of Erdős and company, Prove this record conjecture for the case of straight line records when the edges can be drawn by segments. But here is a picture where they are not segments. In fact, this picture you cannot redraw as a record with the same 
intersection structure with straight line segments at all. So this is Conway, John Conway at the time when he made the conjecture. Uh, actually, Conway was one of the first famous mathematicians at the beginning of the, the COVID uh, uh, pandemics who, who died in COVID. So originally he offered the beer uh, as a um, uh, graduate student. And he offered a beer for the solution of the Streckel conjecture. Uh, but the last time uh, he repeated this problem, the price went up uh, to $1,000. Now, I'm not sure that this is the easiest way to uh, make $1,000, but uh, if I were you, I would try. Now, uh, what is known actually that this upper bound is not uh, completely uh, outrageous. So there is a linear upper bound. So at least the number of edges of a, a circle cannot be like quadratic n square or l log n or whatever it is. Uh, so the best known bound today is uh, that it is at most. Uh, 1.4. But the methods used, maybe they can be adjusted and the constant can be improved from 1.4 to 1.3 and so on. Uh, but those methods will never give uh, uh, a proof of Conway cycle conjecture. So it, it really requires uh, completely new ideas or completely new uh, counterexamples. I don't know if you recognize the, on the Erdős picture that uh, this, uh, uh, in the background of Aditya, uh, there is a children's book uh, about the life of Erdős and uh, that uh, gentleman walking on the right side is, is actually uh, Erdős, according to the uh, illustrator. Okay. So the Threckel conjecture is about graphs, topological graphs or geometric graphs uh, in which there are no two uh, disjoint edges. But obviously you can ask kind of the dual question and it also makes sense. Uh, that what happens if uh, in a geometric topological graph, I uh, uh, forbid k pairwise crossing edges. So if I forbid two crossing edges, it means that the graph is plane. There is no crossing, it's a plane. But if I allow crossings, but I don't allow three pairwise crossing edges, like on those, on that uh, picture of the sky uh, in the co cover photo of my talk, if you don't allow three pairwise crossing edges, or you fix your favorite number k and you, like 10, and you, you don't allow 10 pairwise crossing edges, then what is the maximum number of edges? How many? edges can we have. And uh, these graphs are called quasi-planar graphs. K quasi-planar, right? Because K is, is uh, we fix a number K. And uh, there is this conjecture, which is similar to the case of uh, when we, for, uh, we were forbidding uh, pairwise disjoint edges. The conjecture is that if you have a graph is n uh, vertices and there are no 10 quasi planar no 10 pairwise crossing edges or no k for any k as a matter of fact then uh, probably the number of edges is at most linear of course the constant uh, uh, may depend on k will depend on k now this conjecture even the order of magnitude that it's linear, uh, this conjecture is uh, uh, completely open. So for again, for k equals two, 
uh, two quasi planar it just means that the graph is planar so we know if the graph is planar then the number of edges is at most three and minus six that's Euler's uh, formula it's linear it's okay if there are no three pairwise crossing edges uh, then we still have a linear bound if there are no four pairwise crossing edges, then A.L. Ackerman, Ackerman in 2009 proved that uh, a linear upper bound. But if K is bigger than four, we don't have a linear upper bound. And it's, um, it is a very challenging open problem to try to uh, uh, prove it. And it, it, it would be really surprising, you know, that. Uh, for K class two, three, and four, there is a there's a linear upper bound, but for K class five, if E class five, there wouldn't be. But there are surprising things in mathematics. In fact, uh, uh, most of the theorems that we like in mathematics, uh, or I like in mathematics, are theorems that are surprising, that you would expect uh, something uh, something different, but you know such is life. Sometimes what you would expect is true. Sometimes what you would expect is just totally wrong. So for larger values of four, uh, in the geometric case, for geometric graphs, the best known upper bound instead of the linear bound is uh, n log n, which was proved by Pavel Walter. And several other forms were proved too. And for topological curvilinear graphs, uh, it's again, it's close to n. It's not like n squared or n to the three half. It's n times polylog of n. The polylog is uh, log n to the log k. So it's n times some logarithmic factors. But uh, if, if the graph is not uh, drawn by state line as it is, not a geometric graph, we don't even have a bound in which the number of logs would not depend on k. It depends on k. And that, that would be a major thing to, to uh, decide whether it is an accident or not. So this is, this is a, a beautiful uh, uh, conjecture, I think. Now, there is one more thing that I definitely want to tell you because uh, um, it's uh, an interesting fact and it is related to many important things in um, combinatorics, not just uh, in combinatorial geometry, but uh, more generally. So um, I can call it, Erdős's approach, although I am not completely sure that Erdős made this con uh, connection, although all elements, all of the interesting questions uh, were asked by Erdős. Okay, so uh, look at a quasi planar graph. So, what is a quasi planar graph? Like quasi planar geometric graph. Again, it is a graph drawn by straight line edges. And there are no k pairwise crossing edges. Uh, then uh, you can remove uh, uh, a small neighborhood of the vertices of this graph, and then what you are left with is just a system of segments, right? The edges become segments. And if the graph was quasi planar, then those segments, like, like these segments here, uh, those segments uh, also have the property that uh, there, there are no, uh, no k pairwise crossing segments. Now, once we have these segments, then uh, we can construct a so-called intersection graph uh, associated with these segments. So what is the intersection graph? So here are the segments. To each segment, uh, you assign a vertex. So to two, you assign this vertex. To three, you assign this vertex. And two vertices you connect by an edge if and only if the corresponding segments intersect. 
So here one and three are connected by an edge because segment number one and segment number three, they intersect. And this thing on the right side is, is called the intersection graph of the segments. So this means that if originally there were no K pairwise crossing segments, we can say that, uh, that the intersection graph does not contain a complete subgraph with K vertices. And then, uh, here is uh, here is the uh, problem uh, asked by Andrews. Is it true that if you have an intersection graph of segments or any other geometric objects in the plane, well, let they be segments, uh, and we know that the intersection graph does not have a complete uh, subgraph with k vertices. Is a fixed number, which just means that among the original object, like the segments, there are no k pairwise crossing ones. Then, is it true that uh, the chromatic number of the intersection graph is bounded by a constant, which may depend on k? So, here on this example, uh, there is no, the intersection graph contains no triangle. Is it true that if uh, you have intersection graphs of segments with, with no triangle, then the chromatic number of these intersection graphs is, is bounded by a constant? So is it true that then you can color the uh, vertices of the intersection graph by a constant number of colors so that uh, uh, no two vertices of the same color are? This is just another way, uh, if you translate it back to the original system of segments. So if you have a system of segments and no, there are no, for instance, three, let K be equal three, no three pairwise crossing segments, then is it true, is, does there exist a constant so that you can color the segments by this number of colors so that no two segments of the same color intersect. So this, this was an old uh, problem of Erdős, and, and uh, everybody uh, assumed that, that uh, uh, the answer would be positive. And if uh, the answer is positive, then from that, it would follow that a key quasi-planar graph uh, can have only a linear number of, of edges. And uh, here came the surprise. Uh, I can say bad news, but you can, uh, you can consider it uh, uh, good news uh, too, because it's interest, something interesting happens that no one expected. So actually, there are triangle-free intersection graphs of segments. Uh, so that the chromatic number can be arbitrarily large. So it's not true that if, if the segments, uh, uh, no, there are no three pairwise crossing segments, then you can color the segments with a small number of colors so that, uh, so that uh, no two segments of the same color intersect. So uh, this is, uh, uh, an interesting question, which is uh, related to uh, some other uh, important problems in uh, in uh, graph theory, in Ramsey theory, uh, in particular to the famous Erdős Hajnal conjecture, but I, I don't want to uh, go into that. So if you consider that bad news, uh, there is also good news uh, that um, that uh, it is still possible that the conjecture on quasi-planar graphs is true. In fact, uh, I would still bet on that. And uh, there is some good news that that for some cases, you know, some uh, uh, very similar problems. Uh, 
one can prove strong results. So here is here is one example that I'd like to show. Uh, if instead of um, L pairwise crossing edges, what I forbid is L edges and L other edges, so that the first set of L edges uh, crosses the second set of L edges. So, so I can call it a grid of edges. Here you see this picture uh, that there are L edges that I drew kind of horizontal and L edges that I do kind of vertical. And every kind of horizontal edge intersects every vertical edge. So if, if this is uh, forbidden uh, for a fixed L, then we cannot prove that uh, the graph has at most a linear number of at most constant times n uh, edges. But we can almost prove it at most. Uh, uh, constant times uh, n log star n, where uh, this uh, log star is the iterated logarithmic function. So it's definitely much smaller than log or log log or log log log. And another uh, piece of good news is about the quasi-planar uh, conjecture that uh, if uh, you restrict your attention to convex geometric graphs, what does it mean? So you have a geometric graph and you assume that its vertices are like vertices of a convex angle, or, or you assume that they are on a circle, for instance, every vertex is on a circle. And you start drawing in edges and you know that uh, no, k edges are uh, pairwise crossing, then the number of edges is at most linear, is at most uh, actually, is at most, uh, uh, even the constant depends linearly on k. That we, that we know. So this, uh, this means that this quasi-planar graph, not quasi-planar, it's a misprint, quasi-planar graph conjecture, it may actually be true. And that's, I think it's a very challenging open problem. And again, uh, any new ideas would be most welcome. I think that this is, this is a good point to, to, to stop. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I think that I, I uh, managed to tell you a number of interesting problems, not methods how to tackle them, but at least challenging questions that uh, give you a feeling about the kind of problems that uh, geometric graph theory is concerned with. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, it was very, yeah, it, it's amazing how fundamental problems these are. We can be described in half a slide and they're still open. Are there any yeah. questions for Professor Park? Uh, One question I had is about sort of very, it's a vague question, almost a naive question, where you mentioned something about CK times N and then C times K times N, uh, one of the early conjectures you mentioned. Uh, yes. So, so, so here actually for the quasi planar graphs, it's also the conjecture would be that, uh, that it's constant times K times N, but we don't even know if for a fixed K, it is always linear. So uh -huh. that's why I didn't uh, state it in this form. But, uh, but uh, in the, this, this case for the, when, when K, uh, disjoint edges were forbidden, then we know that, that uh, for a fixed K, uh, there is a constant, but we don't know the dependence of the, Right, I was going to sort of sort of ask is okay. Maybe the, the the conjecture 
there must have been a, probably a reason to arrive at the, the fact that the constant itself is linear in K. Did you know or do we know something like the constant has to be lower than quadratic? <laughs> yeah, yes, because uh, because uh, Again, there are no, yeah. yeah, so so essentially you, you take M, M uh, uh, vertices and um, so, so so maybe in the other in the other case it is uh, easier to explain. Let me go to the uh, to this problem mm -hmm. quasi plane. So mm -hmm. so here you uh, uh, what is forbidden is k pairwise crossing edges. Okay. So what you can do is you you have m vertices and you can draw a planar graph on it. Then there between the edges of the planar graph. There are no, there is no crossing, right? And then on the same vertex set, you can you can take another planar graph. Then now you have already if previously you had three n edges, then now you have six n edges, and uh, of course edges of the second kind can intersect edges of the first kind. And now let's call these new edges red. Now you can put on the same vertex set another uh, planar graph. It's blue edges. Then now you have already nine n edges, right? And every time you can repeat it k times, every time you are adding uh, uh, three n edges, so altogether you will have roughly three k n edges. Right. And definitely there won't be k plus one pairwise crossing edges, because if you have k plus one uh, uh, edges, then uh, you, okay. you must have picked uh, two edges of the same color by yes. the yes. vision board. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but uh, edges of the same color were just a planar graph, so they cannot cross. So this shows that the lower bound uh, really grows linearly, at least linearly with K. Right, right, right. And, and you can do the same with the disjoint edges, that you just put graphs on top, K graphs on top of each other, and and uh, you will have uh, constant times k times n edges. Uh, whether you can do much better could be surprising. Right. Yep. Thank you. Yes. But just one question. Yeah. Yes. Now, is it possible not to fix k? For example, you can look at root n quasi planar graph on n vertices. Yeah, uh, yeah. So this is uh, absolutely um, this is an interesting question, and uh, and uh, there are some some uh, results in in uh, uh, this direction. So uh, <clears throat> so even even the k can be even uh, linear. So, for ah. instance, uh, you you can ask, uh, assume that a graph is a dense graph, right? Like uh, you have n vertices. Assume that you choose one divided by ten uh, times n square edges. Okay, uh, the graph is dense. It contains one tenth of all possible all possible mm -hmm. edges. Is it true that then you can choose constant times n, a linear number of pairwise crossing edges. Oh. So then the k is constant times n. It's not known. Oh. It's not known. So you can have like at least epsilon percentage of all edges of a graph, epsilon times n square edges. Is it true that, that then you can find uh, um, constant times n pairwise crossing edges. Mm -hmm. We don't know, the best what is known is that uh, uh, you can pick n to the one minus little of one pairwise crossing edges. But probably this little of one is not needed. Yeah, it's, it's a very good question, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That k can be, can be larger and ever, we, we for, for every k we get an interesting question and uh, for some of those questions we can say something but for none of those cases we have 
a perfect solution. I see. In some sense, is there any trivial case? You know, for example, if K varies in a certain fashion, answer is trivial. So this is, you, you, you see, uh, for K equals two, three, and four, we know that it's linear. For, uh, for larger values, we know that it's, uh, it's close to linear n times polylog. But that's also, so for K equals uh, five, we already don't know the exact answer. Right. And for larger values, we don't really know how it goes. So it's, uh, no, our, 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 our knowledge is really not very right. satisfactory. Right. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Any further questions? It's already late, uh, right? It's uh, it's amazing that you stayed up, uh, right? It's e it's 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 the it's evening, it's it's like seven thirty. Seven and seven thirty in Kolkata. It's close Over. to the time, but not not. Sir, I wanted to ask you one non uh, some question not related to this uh, topic, but related to something I found peculiar about your presentation. Do you handwrite your slides? I handwrite. Last? Yes, I I, I handwrite everything. Oh. Yes. Last time also I remember seeing such a thing. So I I wanted to ask you yes. Wow. Yeah. Well, I actually thought this was some actual font in the, in the laptop that's so uniform. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, one has to write very slowly because uh, even if I write slowly, I make mistakes. Like it's quasi planar, I misspelled. So I have to write it so slowly that minimize the number of mistakes. <laughs> wow. And if you write slowly, then it can be uniform. It really looks uniform. <laughs> I genuinely thought this was fun. Okay, but if there are no further questions for Professor Park, then let's thank him again for a very nice talk. So have a very ah. nice weekend. Have a very nice weekend. And I hope to see uh, all of you Yes. Uh, in India very soon. Yes, that's absolutely.